This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321 and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at my two currently inked pens. Both of these pens have required a little bit of work this week, a little bit of adjusting and experimenting, but now I believe I've got two pens that I'm looking forward to using even more in the upcoming week. I'm going to begin with the Monteverde Ritma pocket pen. Okay, when I first got this pen, my first impressions were great. I loved the way the nib wrote. It has the number five Omniflex nib. Now, I don't do writing where I need to flex the nib, but I do believe this nib has just the slightest amount of bounce to it that you wouldn't get in just a normal stainless steel nib. It's just a joy to write with. I like the way the tipping is ground. I like the amount of ink that it puts down. The only issue I was having when I first got it, I put Sailor Tokiwa Matsu in it, and I've never had any problems with that ink, but if you paused for literally 10 seconds, the pen would not write. Now I've been sitting here talking for a bit longer than that. Let's see if it writes. I changed inks and let's see if it writes. Yeah. I switched inks to Dimine Earl Grey, which is, it's a very wet ink, but it feels dry when you're writing with it. At least that's been my experience in other pens. But in this pen, in this nib, it just feels delightful, enjoyable to write with. Let's see, this is the number five. Omniflex. I like the amount of ink that it puts down, especially with this Dimine Earl Grey. I'm seeing just a little bit of shading. The reverse writing is very nice. And just changing inks, I've had absolutely no trouble with this nib drying out. And I mentioned to a few people what I believe the issue is, and I noticed this when I was comparing this nib to my Caveco, um, Caveco AL Sport nib. The tines come out quite a bit farther past the feed, and I think... If you're using an a, a dry ink or even just an average ink, it's going to be more prone to dry up there in the nib slit. And so with this really wet ink, this ink, it, it's, oh, I had a bit of a hard start there. But this ink doesn't tend to feather. It's a watery ink. It's it's not that it's overly lubricated. It's just very watery. And using it, I'm not as big of a fan using it on Tomoe River paper. It's nice, but I really enjoy writing with this pen and ink combination on Leuchtturm, on Rhodia, uh, my Maramon Nemosyne notebooks it just this nib feels really nice on those I'm and this Earl Grey ink just looks so good with this the colors of this pen I've just been really pleased with it now one of the things I really like about this nib is that it's like two nibs in one you've got 
the, I would call this, this Omniflex. They don't say what size it is, but it feels like a medium fine to me. And then the reverse writing seems like an extra fine. But for my use case, I would prefer the finer side of the nib to be the regular writing and then the reverse writing be the broader side of the nib. And so I've been wanting to do this for a while, do a little bit more nib grinding. And so that kind of motivated me today to take take out my Moonman M800 and I got one of my Jinhao replacement nibs that I bought months ago to do some practice nib grinding. And so let's see how it turned out. I've got it inked up with Tasha Hokusai Tasha Hokusai Benesuchi. And I'm not sure, does this nib even say what size it is? No, just a Jinhao nib. I'm not sure what size it is, but that Hokusai Benesuchi just looks really good. You get some nice shading. And then now when I flip it, I get a broader line. The only thing I don't like about it with this ink being um, having some nice shading to it, when it writes the broader line and spreads the ink out, it's just kind of flat and plain looking. So when I clean this pen out and put a new ink in it, I think I'm going to try something a little more saturated, but I do like the difference in line width that I'm getting. What I did was I started by flipping it over and grinding the back side into a blade grind, but I wasn't getting the difference in line width that I wanted. The down strokes were still very fine, but the side strokes then were wider. So I just kind of flattened it out some more. And now this is very smooth and enjoyable to write with. And the reason I want the back side of the nib to write a little broader is like if I want to write a heading. in some notes. And then the majority of my notes will be, I want to be a finer line. The only thing I don't like about it right now is how flat the ink is when I'm writing on the reverse side. And I think I can correct that by using a darker, more saturated ink, maybe a darker blue. But I like how it turned out. This is very smooth and enjoyable to write with on the back side. And this is also, this was a good Gen Hound nib. In fact, that whole batch, I think I got four or five nibs. And they all seem to be really well tuned. The Moonman nib that came with this was just not that great. It's the tines are not well aligned. But I'm looking forward to playing with this, the M800, playing with it some more this week. And I'm looking forward to just using this little pocket pen. 
Alright, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.